Hello and welcome to the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Today's guest, oh my God, today's guest, somebody that I adore, somebody who is one of the top realtors in the state of Florida, someone who is an educator, an inspirator, and more importantly, a new friend of mine since I've been at EXP and someone who has welcomed me with open arms and now I consider a dear, dear friend. Renee Funk, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, Michael Valdez. Hi, friend. It's so good Hi. to see your face. And thank you so much for having me. What an honor. Are you kidding? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking we met, myself that I didn't do it sooner. <laughs> from the moment we met, I just, you know, you are a force. You are a leader who inspires and I couldn't be any more proud to be in business with you. Oh, my sweet angel. Thank you. But you know what? It's sort of like, I remember it was the first, I think it was like the first month that I was here, which was, I guess, 18 months ago. You're one of the first people that reached out. You're one of the first people that sort of said, I want to get to know you. You're one of the yep. first people that had me on your show, Leadership from the Heart. And right. it just started there. And this beautiful friendship has developed and now a great, you know, obviously the business is the business. You're, you're, you're wonderful in, in this industry. And we're going to get to all of that, but it's so wonderful to have you as a friend. And that's, what's been wonderful. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's jump right in. I'm going to ask you from the start, how did you get started in real estate? The way that I got started in real estate is a really good lesson that uh -oh. we put, uh, it was a really good lesson that we put <laughs> our faith sometimes in um, allowing the universe to work in the way that it should. Yes. And what I mean by that is that I didn't want to get into real estate. <laughs> I did not want to get into real estate. You know how many times people One have bit. said that story that are so legendary in our industry? You know, it's crazy. Tell me about that. It is crazy. And I work together with my husband, Jeffrey yes. Funk. Um, Jeff has been in the real estate industry for over 20 years. And he it's one of his forever I told you so's because he had been <laughs> nudging me, nudging me to get into real estate and to come into business and partner with him. And I did not want to in one iota of my being. But it was because I had the wrong idea and I had a misconception about the opportunities that can unfold within the real estate industry. In my mind, I saw only one path that would be um, a bit of a box to fit me into success. And this is why I say it's a really great lesson to have faith in the universe showing you Sometimes, yes. right, the universe will appear an opportunity and you have to really be paying attention because I almost missed it. And what I later found out is um, I entered into the most beautiful industry that offers so many different pathways to success. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that oftentimes when someone thinks about real estate, they only think, well, I'm going to be serving home buyers and home sellers, which is incredibly important. And that's sure. the bread and butter of what we do. But the reality is there's so many ways that we can um, have our skill sets shine and so many different pathways to success that allow us as business owners to define yes. what success means to us so as long as we're surrounded by greats who will help us peel the layers back and truly lean into what greatness can mean for each of us as individuals. I love that. Oh my goodness. So, so Jeff is the reason you got in. He is, he is. Oh my God. <laughs> he is like one of the, the most amazing human beings I've ever met. And uh, well, you know, he's my favorite realtor. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better be saying that. I can say that. <laughs> you know, and I got to spend a lot of time with him in Las Vegas. We were just there and it was just wonderful to get to know him better also. And it's so beautiful to see you guys together as a unit. And really tell me about that. How does that work? How does that dynamic of a married couple together in business work for you guys? That's our most frequently asked question. Jeff I'm and sure. I, right? <laughs> how, how do you work together so closely as spouses in business partnership 
and still uh, like each other so much. Uh, I, and we actually really do. At least I think we do. I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to have him on the show to ask his side of this. Exactly. Uh, and also we're parents. We're raising two beautiful boys. Um, so how does it work? Well, the way that I think it's working for us is that we don't put parameters and we don't put other people's ideals of what it should look like into our opinion of what it is. An example of that, that is, I, I have people say, do you talk about work at the dinner table? Are, am I allowed to kind of curse? Oh, sure. Okay, hell yes. I've had so Chuck Fazio talk- on the show. You can curse oh, all you want. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> shout out to Chuck and Angela Fazio. Love, love them. Oh my um, God. Chuck and Angela, love you. Uh, so do we talk about business at the dinner table? Hell yes, we do. And so I, I've, I've always felt when someone asked me that question that there might be a bit of a, an ideal that that might not be something we should do. And the reality is, is that there's a lot of blessings and there's a lot of sure. positive trade-offs to that because um, I find it important for our children to see what it takes to be a business owner and entrepreneur. And there is no such thing as work-life balance. It's work-life integration. Oh, I love that. Our children need to see it because also when they ask me for the next pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it comes from. <laughs> yes. Then they have a better idea of the work that it takes. Yes. Right. And so we've, in, we've chosen to not put those kind of boundaries on ourselves or put pressure about what it should look like. This is what it is. We're business owners. Uh, we're parents. Uh, we're spouses and we do what it takes. I love that. That's amazing. I mean, it really is that. That's why you're so successful because you don't want to sort of like, what is everybody else's definition of it, right? So it's just yours and it should be. That's the only definition that exists. Right, right. And do we work more than we should? Yep, we do. Do we, um, you know, we, we do, we've come to a point in our career though now Yes. Um, that we are able to put more boundaries in. We're getting better. I love uh, but it. But it's the real estate industry. And sure. when real estate calls, you answer. Exactly. Exactly. Now, you know, you also, you were just starting to allude to this. You're also someone who builds a lot of others. And so I know you have a great passion for coaching, for mentoring. I mean, I know you're a wonderful mother, but where did it come from that sense of wanting to give back to your peers? Another lesson, Michael, that I yes. learned in at I learned this lesson as I became more firmly rooted in my journey in the real yeah. estate industry. And that is there so when we learn a lesson, we, we usually learn that by making mistakes. Sure. And I made some mistakes in my um, earlier years of being a realtor. And that was that I believed that we should keep all the secret sauce secret. In fact, for uh, many years before I came into the industry, Jeff was the top producer in his real estate office month after month after month after month over and over year and year and year. Right. And I yep. came into the mix and I started seeing, um, with clear vision, all the hard work that it took to achieve that. And we were in environments previous where it wasn't conducive and it wasn't really encouraged to share. So I first came in and I had the mindset, don't share, don't tell anybody what we're doing. We're getting all these, yeah, yeah, we're getting bloody knuckles to figure it out ourselves. So why would we share? Well, the first couple of years I had that thought process then I was shown a different way. I was shown that this coincidental thing happens in the universe. The more you share, the more, the more the universe ends up coming back with abundance. We mm. know that to be the fact when we're philanthropically focused, giving back in our personal lives where we're able to. I didn't learn the lesson that that worked the same way in business until probably about the last four years. Really? And this amazing thing happened. I realized, number one, the more we give, the more the universe comes back with abundance. And I identified that I love helping others mm-hmm. shorten their learning curve. Yes. And be transparent around, if I fell into a trap, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it loud. And I want to make sure you avoid it. Because when we help each other rise, 
then even as an industry, it's not even about the brokerage, right? Whatever brokerage you're with in the real estate industry, when we all help each other rise, then our whole industry improves. It's so true. This is a part of the journey that I've had the blessing to be a part of. And I just pinch myself. I love that. I love that. Okay. So let's stay on that. Now, you know, the industry has obviously changed so much, Mm. right? And, you know, I got into this 17 years ago when I was, um, and, and, you know, so I lived through the down market, but so many people that are in the industry now have only seen a very sort of like stable market that grows year over year. And I think it's almost, you know, I feel sorry for those agents that are in the business that are new because they don't have the skill sets yet to survive in the business when the business turns around, right? It's sort of like the biz, the market is cyclical. We're now on a very long up cycle, but it's unusual and the market will turn. And so three pieces of advice that you would give an agent coming into the business today. <laughs> Here we this. go. I love this. Another lesson I've learned. I'm sure. (laughs) Oh my goodness. So while I wasn't a part of the financial downturn, being a realtor, I wasn't in the real estate industry during the financial collapse. I was married to a realtor. Yes, which is probably worse. That's the same thing. (laughs) So when I talk about my real estate experience, I really look at it as well. By proximity, it's 21 years. Exactly. Officially licensed eight. Got um, it. So if we look at if we look at the that very tough time, um, yeah. even for myself, uh, it was a it was a tough time where power was being turned off. We had a yeah. almost brand new baby. Um, we were in a rental. We didn't really have furniture throughout the house. It was a tough time. Sure. However. One of the reasons why I'm so bullish on new agents, either newly licensed agents today or agents who have just recently received their license over the last year and maybe are on a little bit of shaking ground, not sure which direction to go. Mm -hmm. I'm very bullish. And now we have the numbers to back it is that our newest agents that have partnered with Fun Collection here in Orlando are seeing staggering, staggering results. The lowest production we've seen from an agent licensed less than a year right now has closed about $3.9 million in real estate. Wow. Okay. Why do I think that is? Well, apart from the fact that we have all the systems, tools, processes, yes, that's true, right? We don't have to go down all the value proposition. It's amazing. We're doing big things. But here's what I think is I think that being in this market more recently where low inventory, the challenges that are inherent to this market with low inventory and everything else. As a new agent, this is the only environment you know. That's right. And the new agents are not, they're not inhibited. They just go out and make it happen. And I liken it to the fact that although I'm, I'm not saying it's a financial collapse in any way, but what I am saying is back in the financial collapse, Jeff went out and built a credible business. He built an incredible business where other realtors were stumbling because That's they right. knew a different market. And he came in and said, no, you know what? I'm going to have the grit and I'm going to prevail. And I see those agents coming in right now with the most grit to say, this is the condition. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to go pound the pavement, knock the doors, make the phone calls. So my advice to agents who are coming in is you're holding an incredible opportunity in your hands right now. And you actually have more of an opportunity sometimes than the seasoned agents, because I've seen some seasoned agents get stuck with a limiting mindset belief. Take it for granted. Yeah. And the new agents new to newer, they're coming in and they're pounding pavement and making it happen. I love and that. it's so inspiring. So I would say, believe that you can don't let anybody, including yourself, make you feel less than because you are newer to the industry and really ask yourself, 
what is going to make myself skip to work each day? Because the real estate industry, while we have trade-offs, we have to do the work and we have to yeah. have the grit. We get to identify our own skill sets and really lean into what those are. And we can make big things happen. You don't have to fit into a box. If someone says you have to call, you have to call Fizbo's. No, you don't. Exactly. You have to buy leads. No, you don't. Exactly. You have to door knock. No, you don't. You have to define what it's going to make you skip to work and really love what you do. And then consistency and good habits wins every time. Those are great pieces of advice. Now, I want to ask you, you were, you've already alluded to some wonderful lessons that you've learned. What's the greatest lesson you've learned in your career thus far? Oh, uh, this, this lesson is something that has really come to light over the last year where I've felt an articulation of this fact in my life. And that is that we need to make sure we surround ourselves with people who will ask us, what is the biggest dream you've ever dreamt for yourself? Mm. And if we're not around people, if we don't have people oh. sitting at our table asking, what's the biggest dream you've dreamt for yourself? What's the biggest dream you can dream for yourself? Then we probably need to assess who's sitting at the table. Yes. And there were a lot of years where, it's not to be negative about who was at the table, but what I realize is how impactful those at the table can be when they ask the question, because I wasn't thinking big enough. And the reality is, is that I'm the only one in my own way. We are all the, we are the ones that can be in our own way. And when we are encouraged by those who sit at the table with us, to ask ourselves and to look around and say, well, what's the biggest dream that you can dream for yourself? Just throw it out there. Even if you fall a little short, really amazing things happen. So I would say the biggest lesson is making sure that we're asking of ourselves and everyone around us, what is the biggest dream that you can dream for yourself? You know, it's funny because I say often, think of it as though you were having a dinner party for eight people and those seven guests are the people that you want to learn the most from. Yep. That becomes the board of directors for your life. And then in your mind, it's what's the role of the board of directors? If you were a company to make you grow and thrive. And so who are those seven people that are selected around you? And it's exactly what you were saying. Who's going to challenge you to be great? Yes. And I love and that. Who's going to allow you the space to even say the most audacious goal? That's right. Right. That's right. And, and it, you know, one of the things that um, we've been talking with our agents about this year where we've just wrapped up our business planning for 2022, of course. And in that business planning, we do audits, um, many different types of audits on 2021. And, and so we know where to lean in, where to retract if we need to retract in certain sources and ways that we generate business. But here's a newer, a newer consideration for us, and that's auditing your sphere of influence. Yes. Yes. Auditing your sphere of influence. And, and again, going back to that table, like we like to have lots of legs under our table because we like to dance on top of the table. <laughs> but at that same table, let's assess who's around us and let's make sure that everyone around us is a wonderful blend of people who are bringing the ingredients that it takes to build the recipes, to get in, you know, get into that great meal. That's right. Right. And also those who you look around and say, okay, they are helping me rise to my next level of greatness and helping others That's rise right. to their level of greatness that they're seeking to rise to. Look, we all evolve, right? We can't be stagnant. We all evolve and time is finite. And yes. so in order to add somebody else new in, you have to take something else out because time is finite. You can't yep. put it on top of it. 
So if it's somebody that's not nurturing who you are or challenging you to be who you can be, the future you, then that space is not given to what that is for that growth. And so I think that's super important. It's not as though you're firing your friends. You're nope. making space for your growth to continue because we're 100%. always evolving. I think it was at um, Shareholder Summit in 2020, Glenn, Glenn Sanford gave a keynote on whether we're in coast mode or we're, whether we're in growth mode. That's right. Right. And, and, it, and it's, it's okay and acceptable to be in both. These are both these right. are very individual steps in the journey. And these are very individual decisions or um, processes. However, it's important for us to ask ourselves that question. That's right. Are, of course. are we in coast mode? If we are in coast mode, is that where we want to be? We can't be in coast mode and growth mode. That's right. It doesn't exist. I, and so if we're looking to be in growth mode, I would probably say it's time to make sure we do an audit of who's sitting at the table and make sure everybody that's sitting at your table is in growth mode with you. Exactly. You can't go up the hill in neutral. Correct. Doesn't work. I love it. <laughs> and by the way, I'm really glad you're at my table and I'm at your table and I'm loving the table we're all I at. love the table we've got. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being such an inspiring leader because when I when I mention, you know, the the lessons that have been so important, oh my goodness, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for those that are sitting at the table with us. I mean, and you are at that table and all of the leaders that we have mentors pouring in you know, another thing that I promise everyone around me is those who pour into me, my vow is I will cascade that through to others who have their hand out asking to be in their next level. You know what? That's what that's, makes this go round and round. That's why I started this podcast to really be able to sit with my friends around the world and be able to share knowledge for those that are seeking it. Right. And you know, what's so beautiful. We've just actually crossed a hundred countries of distribution for this podcast. And we're have uh, 12 million um, um, sort of um, impressions thus far on the, uh, on the podcast, which means that whatever we're talking about, people are receiving. Yes. And that's beautiful because that was the purpose of it. And it's exactly what you just said. It was my commitment because I used to mentor a lot of folks and it was just really, I mean, this started during the pandemic as you started your podcast, which I wanna talk about in a second, during the pandemic. And it was the idea of how do you reach people? How do you sort of get that connection? And so tell me about that. Tell me about your podcast that you did with our other dear friend, Elizabeth Riley. And shout out to Elizabeth Riley. Shout out. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Riley. Tell me Tell me how that started. Tell me how that came together and what your purpose was, because I thought that the title was so powerful and you did it every day. I do this oh once a week. You goodness. did it every day. Well, so for context, we're on a bit of a hiatus, but we're coming yes. back at the beginning of the year. So we need you back, Michael. I'm going I'm here. to go right on, right on this show right now and get your commitment. <laughs> You're coming back to leadership. I'm here. Whenever you need me, you know that <laughs> always. Uh, leadership from the heart really happened in a moment of um, sadness, confusion, mm. um, apprehension, feeling less than, and those those descriptions come from where I was sitting. And I'll give you more context. So it was March fourteenth, twenty twenty. Yeah. Obviously, we know what was going on then. Yeah. Uh, the uh, pandemic was just hitting us all around the globe. Um, I am very blessed to be a in a leadership role with many real estate agents in Central Florida. We have now um, 100 agents and wow. one could imagine we were receiving a lot of phone calls. Sure. What do we do? What's going to happen, right? All of these questions. And so as leaders, we have to make sure we put on our controlled disposition doesn't mean we have to have all the answers or that we might have all the answers, but we have right. to control ourselves and make sure that we're um, coming in a place from thoughtful leadership and um, coming from contribution. 
That's right. But the reality was behind the scenes, I had quite a moment. I called my best friend, Elizabeth Riley in Austin, Texas. Um, she is the most amazing friend and realtor. And I cried oh. and said, I don't know what to do. I'm going to fail all of these agents. I don't have the answers. Um, I'm a terrible leader. I'm not equipped to handle this, right? All the negatives. I was not oh. able, not able, not able. And she's a great friend. And she said, okay, wait, hold on. We need to feel this emotion. And then we need to say, let's get into resolution mode. What do we know? We know that we have some really great mentors in our life, right? And we do. Yep. And so we start, Elizabeth and I started talking through on this phone call on that day in March. Well, we may not have all the answers, but what if we call on the amazing mentors in our life and ask them to show up on Zoom? Literally, this was, I think, a Saturday. We literally started the first one Monday. Oh my we gosh, I didn't texting. know that. Yeah, we, so we text Glenn, we, Brad Inman, Stefan Swanepoel. We're wow. just texting people, right? Hey, we're going to do a Zoom every day at two o'clock Eastern. Can you hop on? And everybody said yes. What was the plan? No clue. We're going to show <laughs> up and we are going to be real and have conversations around the fact that we may not have all the answers, but, but we're standing here. together linking arms we're here and we're going to get through it I and so we that. did leadership from the heart um for probably about three months five days a week every day two o'clock eastern and just called upon every leader that we could think of to say what are you experiencing in this moment and how can we show up for those around us it was such a special project and I was so touched that you asked me to be on it. And it was, I, I loved it. I loved everything about that. Everything that that represented and represents because it's still there, it's in the universe. And it was powerful what you were doing, that it was every single day. So thank you for that contribution that you put out there. Oh, I'm grateful for all of the leaders that said yes. And yeah. I'm grateful for yet another lesson I didn't know before March of 2020 that I now have. And that is whenever we're in a moment of uncertainty, which it it's happened many times since, and it'll continue to happen. It happens for everyone sure. is to pause and say, it is okay that we don't know the answers. Yep. It's so true. It is okay. Yeah. And we knew, and what's interesting is I, I knew that from a real estate, we've talked to agents all the time. When you have a customer ask you a question, uh -huh. if you don't know, you just say, that's a really great question. Let me, con let me, let me connect with my team and I'll get back to you. But in that moment, you feel like you need to show up, show up big. And it was such a great, valuable lesson is it. to not be fearful and that there is a humility and also an incredible opportunity when an organization will come together and say, we may not have all the answers, but together we're going to get through this. And we're here. Exactly. And that was sort of such up. a strong message. And so I want to talk about, I want to talk about messaging and which translates to marketing, right? And how yeah. important marketing is. And so how, you know, you are a genius at this. I actually am in awe that I, first of all, I'm excited that I'm going to come out on uh, in February to Orlando from an incredible invitation that you had extended to me and some other of our senior leadership. And it's to actually be your guest at the Orlando Magic NBA basketball game because you are one of the main sponsors of the NBA team. How on earth did that happen? <laughs> well, like, we're so amazing. glad you're coming. First of all, we're so glad uh, that you'll I can't be wait. attending. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we, we talked about being audacious in our goals earlier, you and I, in this yes. podcast. Um, the sponsorship of the Orlando Magic was Jeff, my husband's BHAG. If you've heard the yes. term BHAG, right? Big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, the story that goes behind it was that Jeff and I have attended real estate conferences for many, many years, and we were at a real estate conference and 
um, a now friend of ours back then, we, we just looked at this agent and we said, oh my gosh, this agent's massive. He's so big and, and successful. This agent sponsored a professional team. And so this is probably eight years ago. Jeff yeah. looked at me and he said, I'm pretty sure when you get to that level, that is one level of success I can't even imagine, right? That must oh. really be amazing. And he filed it and a couple of years went by and he said, you know, wonder what that would be like. Let's just throw that out there. I would like to sponsor the Orlando Magic. Okay. Years go by, um, we had come very close to a contract with the NBA um, about two years prior to when we actually signed. Um, we've, right. We're in our third year right now. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, time goes fast, third year. <laughs> wow. Um, so the first time that the opportunity presented itself, the planets didn't align. And so you think then another good lesson is you think if, if something presents itself and the door has to be closed for one reason or another, don't allow that to get in your way or don't allow that to be the final definition of the situation. If you don't want it to be, because sometimes it's just not the right time. Sometimes you have to trust the process. So fast forward another two years and the opportunity presented itself again. And we had the ability and the timing was right. And we said, yes. And so we're now so on they. year three as uh, sponsors of the NBA Orlando Magic. And it's uh, been a really proud, proud affiliation to be able to reach that level. And it's been a lot of fun too. Oh, that's, that, that's extraordinary. I mean, that's, that's a BHAG. That's it really a BHAG. Is. It really and is. I also love sharing too. I mean, I don't love, but since we're here to talk about lessons and overcoming and, and really trying to stay agile is if we think about the time that Jeff and I partnered with the NBA, we launched in the fall of 2019. We just kind of get cooking, right? Sure. We're going, we've got a good cadence, right? And then the pandemic then hits. Yeah. So when people will ask, well, how, what is that like? And what's the ROI and how's it panning out? The reality is, is that we've been incredibly agile, just like everything else. And the building NBA, relationships. Right. It's building relationships. The MBA, um, the process, the, the, everything about it is needed and called for us all to be agile. So it's not quite what we had originally em envisioned, but it's, we're back now. It's coming back and we're it, doing it, good. In a big way. Oh my God, is it ever. Is it ever We're excited? So I have one final question for you, Renee. Yes. In your book of life, what is this chapter called? Happiness. Hmm. And why? Happiness. And I didn't know you were going to ask me that question, Michael Valdez. Well, you didn't read your questions, Renee Funk. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, and I did share with you. I like to, I like to just, you know, have conversations, especially when it's with friends. Michael says, awesome. come on my show. I go, okay, sure. Yeah, sure. I'll show up. I I'm, I'm excited about that. So, um, it's happiness, happiness because, um, oh, I didn't know I was going to get teary eyed. Um, I never knew that it could be this good. And I almost missed the opportunity. I almost missed the opportunity to realize that um, there's, there's opportunities in business that allow you to really find what you're passionate about and lean into that and not have to compromise who you are. And when I talk about the real estate industry being this amazing, beautiful place. It's obviously a challenging industry. Sure. We, we want to not all be rainbows and butterflies. It's, it's equally as challenging as it can be beautiful, but I am so incredibly happy that I have found an opportunity that allows me to lean in and help others and to share the opportunity. Um, also, I mean, I'm, I'm nearing 50. And I just think it's been the best decade. So it's happiness, Michael. I'm, I'm, I'm darn happy. And you look it. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> it is. Lean in, baby. Lean That's in. That's it. 
I love that. Oh my gosh. Renee Funk, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for sharing your whole soul and being and the lessons that you did today to share and who you touched today around the globe. I love our friendship. I adore you. I adore your husband. I adore what you do for others. And I can't wait to see you in person in February, but I think we're going to see each other sooner as well. I think we're seeing each other in Inman in January. So I think we're going to see each other in January in New York. I'll, yeah, like this I Florida so girl's going to get her winter coat out, Michael. Yeah, you need to. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Thank the show, you. Renee. I adore thank you. Thank you. I adore you right back. And thank you for being an amazing leader who inspires all of us and asks us to think bigger because um, you're, you're in this journey and I couldn't be more proud to be able to be on the journey with you. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Renee. And thank you all of you for listening. This has been the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Mm-hmm.